I mean, I'm, you, you're saying obviously it's overgrown and most people look at this, but yeah. as you can see, <laughs> birds are loving it. Yeah. Well, blackbirds, the mountain blackbirds, we had two to start with up by the greenhouse. They love that, they, they, there's about four or five underneath that ball, but they love the ball ball. But the amount of blackbirds we see now is, is amazing. Just, you know, we've had um, Devon Wildlife Trust. They've come to do, they did two surveys and they can't believe how much life has come back here in such, such a period. Because it's not been long, is it? No. no. Well, three years, really, you're talking about yeah. what this has been done. Since, well, since Josh has been here, really. This is, you know, the strong Josh influence, natural farming, you know, the meadows, um, the whole process that Josh thinks about. It's, it's, you know, a lot of people can't quite grasp it, but actually when you see the results, you know, and learn from the failures, you know, we've made failures, we all do. Yeah, but so does nature, right? Mm. I mean, this is the thing we forget. And actually, you know, what we see as a failure, it doesn't mean yeah. that it's a failure. It no. just means that we got, we got an, more of an understanding. Yes. As you can see, that is all docks. So from a farmer's point of view, yeah, they'll look at this. That is the biggest nightmare, and a lot of farmers will yeah. go, oh my goodness gracious me. But because of obviously what it offers, they're actually not doing any harm because we're not growing anything they will affect. Okay. They are... Um, a slight windbreak as well to protect all well, this is our orchard all the fruit trees fruit bushes and we have agroforestry um, trees to break the lines up as well it's all done in a spiral um, we have rows in between um, this year we've completely left it we haven't mowed it at all but what we would do normally if we mowed it between each row there's an avenue we would get a sickle so that would cut the grass at full length and we'd take it the produce field and use it as a mulch. So again, we're utilising everything we have here. We don't need to buy in. We don't need to buy in compost or anything um, to suppress the weeds, keep the moisture in, give food to the bacteria and fungi. All in the same sort of thing. I wonder if we can actually see, because there was some fungi when I was uh, having a walk around the other day. There was a, <laughs> There's loads of spores normally coming up. Quite wetty feety. <laughs> It's really wet. And you know what, this is what I like about this, is that actually the wetness is just, it's not just to do with um, uh, it's been raining, but actually it's keeping its moisture. Yeah, I mean, um, this is really... I mean, if you look around the street and this stuff... Because this is just mulch and manure, and that's just holding. Just and hold. again, all this grass is holding everything in. I mean, look how loose that soil is. <laughs> it's just lovely. Look, look at that. And this is what, um, this is what you've, you've created is a design yeah. so that the moisture that does come yeah. then is utilized by the yeah. by the system yeah. um, and I think the key thing to, to bear in mind is that um, you know one of the big things that uh, you've done in here is you've tried to create carbon pockets yeah. and retain that carbon to be able to do something with it yes. and obviously create yes. those nutrient pockets that are needed for the plants yeah. themselves and again we can utilize you know we cut the docks down we can put them around bottom of the plant there's a mulch there's a feed the grass everything here is what we need but this yep. year we've left it completely go wild just to see what happens see if it has any impact at all or any negative impact because why would we put the manpower into cutting it mowing it using fossil fuels da, 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 when we probably don't need to yeah you know so it's again josh is thinking about going into more of an edible forest so you put more canopies, more trees in it, more fruit bushes. So basically, Josh and more like... shade, and more shade. You know what Josh said to me the other day, and I think you know it's a valid point when we talk about these things. Is that actually we forget uh, sometimes, especially in a changing climate, that at some point, if you don't have that canopy, yeah. then things are just going to burn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the actually, the soil is going to get drier and drier and drier and drier. And one thing uh, Josh said to me, and I'm sure you agree, is that maybe maybe there's some sense in agroforestry yes. in respects to growing things so actually having a forest and having the canopy to be able to um to, to well, shelter rainforest yeah really hot countries but look at the growth the lushness why because it's got a canopy yeah interesting rather than chucking all these fancy foods and crops to grow everywhere that really everyone just grow what we have and we'll grow the, the problem that we have though and this is one thing i i've learned from you guys here is that when you look at something, mm. in my head, I look at it and think, 
is it edible or is not? And what you fed me, you know, walking yeah. down, I look at it and go, that looks like a weed, that yeah. must be bad. Yeah. And the problem is, with, especially with UK society, is that we've got to this point in, in, our, in our way of mentality is that if it's not in a supermarket and it's yeah. not being grown, therefore yeah. it's not the right thing. Yeah. No. And actually, well, we'll see you in a minute. Obviously, with your yeah. vegetable patches, um, there are there are there's stuff in uh, perennials, especially, yes, are. which are delicious. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, that people can't grow perennials in polytunnels because the people want it in the supermarket two months before it should be in season. We've lost our natural thing to eat what's in season. Yeah, and we should grow, eat what's around us because that's how we've evolved in our mother nature. Yeah. And I, I guess the exciting thing that's coming in the future, which I'm hoping, is that we have the opportunity to be able to eat seasonally because yes. that actually creates variety. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one thing I'm really excited about is that, you know, we'll get back to the, the time when, you know, strawberries aren't available all year mm. round. Mm. And actually people will find alternatives to be able to, to you know, to eat different things that yeah. are sweet in, yeah. in, in wintertime, etc. Mm. So again here, this was the the hay we took off all those windrows last year because we had a lot of um, annual seeds, weed seeds. So we bring it here and make a pile of habitat, but also, also we sprayed it with EM and it's naturally rotting down. Yep. Um, again, so if we need to mulch around any of our trees, we have it right here. Yep. So it's literally, you know. Uh, are you making slow gin this year? They're looking no, like I, they, they do use it in the pub, do they? Um, because they look fat we do and get juicy. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, while we're here, nuts, <laughs> not like that, but nuts, uh, nuts or and raisins. raisins. Yeah, because um, you've got nut trees here, haven't you? We've got walnuts, chestnut. Oh, I mean, you know, I, I struggle with all the names of different ones we've got. We've got so many nuts because there's a lot of market gardeners around here, but there's not many people that do fruit and nuts. I don't mean the bar of chocolate either, it's <laughs> basically. So we're going to try and grow a lot more nuts and a lot more fruit to supply the local area. Yeah, because uh, I obviously look at your cherry trees and I wouldn't expect any cherries to be on here because... No, of... well, this is the third year, okay? The first year before me and Joss were here, they were planted out in a very bad, wet February and they did not set off well at all um basically so we've done a lot of work a lot of staking a lot of mulching a lot of spraying um we get in last year i think we got 28 apples in total from the whole orchard Brilliant. the small um, we did have that very early heat wave last year um, which caused apple abortion so basically it was so dry so early a tree so looks after itself by dropping its fruit early so rather than it setting seed, it's thinking, now I preserve myself as a tree, I'll do it next year. And it just drops a whole lot. Mm. So we actually had, I think it was about 28 apples we could actually eat off the whole orchard. Mm. And we, I think, you know, again, because we had this hot spell, we had, some have stopped dropping, um, but we're getting a lot more apples. The trees are so much more growth, easily <coughs> twice as much than there was last year. So it's obviously having the effect. You can, you can definitely see from the new growth yeah. on, on, yeah. on these yeah. that there's definitely been a lot of growth this yes. year. So, um, but that's yeah. the thing, and that, this is what I love about... Well, yeah, they're going to say, virtually the same again. This is what I like about it, is that you understand that, you know, some years you have good and some yeah. years you have yeah. bad. But it's just it's one of things. wine producers, you know, cider producers, everything. You know, everyone has a good year, bad year, and it's trying to help. This is the second year we sowed oxide daisies first year and yellow rattle. This is the second year, so not very long ago, about a month ago, this was a sea of white. Absolutely amazing. Um, we're using yellow rattle, which is a parasitic plant that pushes out grasses. It does rattle, that's why we yeah. call yellow rattle. The flowers are yellow. Hello, big. Um, yellow, Wait. and then they dry, so you get yellow rattle. So this is a natural parasite. So this will push the grass out, which will allow a lot more wild flowers to generally just self-sow. Okay, so hopefully we're going to get orchids and all sorts of different wild flowers that will just naturally come in because they'll be the, the area they won't feel. So I've got a question for you. What you've sown yes. 
at have you seen other things that you haven't sown? Yes, oh, yeah, lot, lots of different things. Um, so yes, you know, and that will happen. The more and more grass is put out, you know, um, that hay will be taken up to the windrow to be um, processed back. But you're not taking it straight away? No. You're letting it seed letting first? It dry, letting the seeds fall out. Yep. We will come with a fork and flick it the old fashioned way. Yep. That's still the best way. Yep. You could come in with a hay bob and twiddle it around, but why bring carbon? Yep. And at compaction with the tractor, we don't want compaction. Yep. Um, and that's one thing I've, uh, you know, the, the ground here, you can see the difference between the agroforestry area and the yeah, ground where here. This, where people walk, okay, mm. your fine plants won't grow as quick as the fast because the nutrients and air can't get into the roots as you come in the areas that nothing walks on. So when we, we reset a bed, we'll call, we call it broad fork, which means we break the soil. So we don't cultivate it. Yes, because the interesting conversation later is uh, no till, no dig. And... Uh, you know, how that can be part of it, but it's not the only thing. No, no. <laughs>